Hey, what's up? Um, crappy weather, rainy day. Just got done milling a project out back yesterday and today. It's pretty much firewood and um, waiting on some rain here. So what I'm going to get working on here is an axe handle. Uh, I've got myself what some would consider a boy's axe. It's a small axe. I've used it for years as a truck axe and around the mill. Uh, I also use it uh, for a wedge banger when I'm falling. And uh, it got uh, busted. So I've been using other axes in the meantime. And I want to make a handle for this. So what I did was I went out in my outside shop. I'll get you in the tripod in a second. And uh, grabbed myself this piece of white oak. That's dry. Um, it's got perfect grain direction. Which is going to be vertical. Uh, slightly rift. So slightly at an angle from corner to corner along the length of the axe with the heel being over here and the axe head over here in this configuration like that. So in that configuration like that. What you really want is you want the grain running. Let me put you in the tripod. This might be a couple of parts here. I'm gonna. I don't know how long this is gonna take me. I could. I'm gonna show you some different methods in doing this. But uh, so what you would want uh, for a grain direction, given this setup for the axe, is a grain running slightly like this which is what we have here uh, straight up and down is fine um, the, the problem with straight up and down is that the axe handle will tend to will tend to bow especially if it's not perfectly dry make sure you can see that yeah this tends to be a little bit more stable. And then the other thing that you want uh, when you shape the sax handle is you want as much of the grain that's running in this direction, these grain strands, if you can see them running down the top right here, you want as much of those as you can to stay intact. In other words, this handle is going to be shaped and it's going to be tapered a little bit down. Not very much, nothing like what I'm drawing right here is exaggerated. But if you see that this grain line right here gets broken right here where this edge would be if I cut it right there. That creates a weak point, and that's another reason why you want the grain like this. Because what it does is, if you cut this, or if you shape this like this, okay, this line that comes out right here, where it's broken right there, where it comes out right here, because of the taper, the bottom of the taper ends up in here somewhere where it's complete all the way along. So you only have a small section of it that's being cut off. Where if it was straight up and down, this one grain line that runs like that, where you shaped off, it would be a straight joint all the way down right there and can break right off. So that's another reason why you want it somewhat in a rifts on configuration, angled to the straight line, and then fairly straight grain, which this piece is. Um, so this axe is not going to be used to chop down trees, but I want it to last. So what I'm doing right now is um, drawing out my profile 
sure you can see, yeah. There, get you over here. Um, drawing out my profile, now this would be the side of the axe before rounding it over. So it's going to axe up would be like that. Drawing out my profile that I'm going to cut out on the bandsaw. And I also am going to profile the side slightly. I'm going to take as much off on the bandsaw as you can before you go ahead and round this thing. And what I have to do is I've got to double check the only critical part of this because the shape of it overall can be anything you want. Now, I want fairly straight handle because it's going to drop down through a holder on my falling belt with a slight palm swell at the end. But the only critical part of this is that where this goes through this axe head, that I have to have a little bit more meat than this distance here. And I'm assuming on this axe that this mortise, this axe mortise is parallel and not tapered. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to look in the camera and draw. That it's parallel, so it's the same width here as it is here. Sometimes they're tapered, sometimes they're not. I'm assuming this one is straight just because it's a lower end axe. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to drill this out. It's got a big old wedge in it and a metal wedge. We're going to drill this out, um, beat this out of here, take some measurements to make sure that I leave this area here bigger than I need. It only needs to be slightly bigger. The most important part is the shoulder right here where it's going to bottom out against the axe. Right there. This shoulder needs to be bigger so when this axe handle gets tapped through in this direction and it goes through like that, that it has a place to bottom out. So this is going to be my shoulder here. I have to make sure that that's bigger than this. Um, and that if this is tapered and this is bigger up here, that I have enough here to accommodate that. So it fills this hole up. Um, so what we're going to do is I am going to, let me get you over here. Kind of show you from this direction. I want to pick myself out. A drill bit to drill out the center of the sacks. And, uh, I want something pretty close to the size of the metal wedge inside, just a little bit smaller. And then I'll just drill some other holes around it. We'll see if we can beat this thing out. So, a hole in the center looks like 3 eighths. It's, I, I got 0.38 right now, so it looks like it's 3 eighths. Any 3 eighths would be uh, 38, uh, 375. Let's pull a 3 eighths out of here. Yeah, so this is 3.7, that hole's 3.8, and that's pretty close. I don't know if that's going to be too big or not. This, this uh, wedge they beat in here might be tapered. So we'll try to go with something smaller, too, to do a little starter hole, see if I get close to the center. I'll just pick out something that looks sharp, which this one I've sharpened. Ooh, and I put a split point on it. Nice. Um, and we'll go with that. Let's go with that for now. Get you guys set up over here. I'll try and drill this thing out, see if we can beat it out. And we'll take some measurements on it. We'll actually, uh, I'm going to cut this piece off square on the end, and then we can trace on the, the profile. The reason that I'm doing it like this, um, 
this, so let, let's talk for a second about this. The reason that I'm doing it like this, uh, hopefully my face is in frame, um, is because simply I could cut this end off, trace out this hole a little bit big, uh, shape it down, stick this accent on here, get an angle grinder or a chainsaw or draw knives or anything, uh, angle grinder with a sanding disc on it works great, especially if you get down to 30, 60, 30 grit or 60 grit or 50 grit or even 80 grit. And I could shape this thing, hold it onto this accent. I could stick this accent on here, shape this handle down to a circle and be done. The problem with not laying it out like this with a center line, center lines are important, center line on both sides and some straight lines, is that doing it by hand and by eye like that, it's very hard to get the ax handle straight. Now, if you're just doing it for yourself, or if you want some funky shape, and the only problem with the, the problem with the funky shape is that you end up like I was talking about earlier with those grain lines running out of the, the curves in it. But if you want some funky shape, it's and it's for you, you can completely do it that way and do it pretty fast. And it'll be fine. You can swing it, hit shit, you're all set. If you're going to do it for customers, which this one is not, I realize that. But if you're going to do it for a customer, you, you need this head to sit on here square, sit flat so that it's fa fairly perpendicular to the handle. Okay? Fairly perpendicular to the handle. And you need it to be straight in this side and in this side um, to the accent. So it tapers away at consistent, so, so that when you hold the axe up like this and you look down it, the handle's in a straight line. It's not curved off or anything stupid and funky. That's why you do it like this. So I want this thing fairly straight and I want to keep the grain fairly straight. So what I'm showing you is a way to do it. That is technically the longer version, but it's the correct version. And once I cut this out on the bandsaw, this goes pretty quick. It can go as fast as you want, depending on what you have to shape it. And like I said, an angle grinder by hand with a, with a sanding disc on it will shape this thing wicked fast. But what we want to do is we want to get... Make sure we have enough material and get off as much on the bandsaw as we can before we start doing that. Just speeds the process. So, with that in mind, I'm going to get try to get this accent out here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to stick it in the vise. I'm going to drill out some holes on it. I guess I could come up with some different holding um, options here, but this should be fine for right now just to drill the holes. And then maybe we'll, we gotta come up, we'll, we'll make this bigger so we can set this on here to beat it out. But let's see if we can get this drilled out. Let's make sure you're looking at what I'm looking at, yep. I wonder if I can zoom out. No, oh, let's zoom in. All right, so I can come out a little bit. Let's get you up a little bit. Let's drill some holes. I'm gonna try to get this one pretty much right down the center here. I don't know if the drill's gonna walk around. Oh, seems like it, it's just going pretty center. So that's interesting. It kind of went through a <coughs> some sort of hollow spot under that metal wedge. I wonder what that's going to look like. Let's get some other holes out here around it. Let me grab another battery. <coughs> Throw this one. 
charger. These shop tools get used in, they're not like my pack out tools, they get used in small spurts. Oh, good, this one's full. So, not all it's full. Running into some metal down there. Can't wait to see what that is. Maybe I ran into the side. Maybe I wasn't going very straight. I'm going to get one over here. So I'm going to use the three inch there. Let's see what Let's try one here, maybe. Now, let me try to go bigger on those holes first. If I drill another hole next to that, it'll be hard to start the bigger drill. Now, let's see if this will... Let's slow this thing down. Too close on this side, I'll try it. Uh, try and drill a couple of smaller holes around it. That's a little big. Let me grab a different drill bit real quick. Let's get something a little smaller. small holes around it. Something that I don't have to take to the grinder to sharpen. Let's take a look at that. Then we'll hit this thing with a punch, see if we can drag it out of here. Trying to get some wood out of the way. Maybe I can do this hole. It's going to be tough. Yeah, I think it's going to be tough. Let's see, maybe here, maybe. If I can get a, just get started. I don't want to scar up the top. I want to keep the top. Um, let's not try that one. Let's drill a hole here. All right. So if I show you the down view at that, Let's see what I got going on here. We got a couple of holes around it. Got one down through there. Um, we're gonna try and bust this out, take this out right now, and then we'll see if we can get it set on here and beat this uh, center out of it. So let's uh, put you over here. We'll go over to my punches. Let's see if we can grab a punch. Something that's in here. 
Most of my punches in the shop in here are center punches. Oh, shit, let me get rid of this. Damn it. Trying to get all my stuff in here that the dog could eat or lick out of here. Uh, these might work. Don't have a lot of flat punches in here. It's mostly center punches. So we take these, get a hammer, and we'll get. Let's see, I think I have a set of needle nose in here. Yep. Set of needle nose. That's in my in my wife's tool section. My wife keeps a her own section of tools, so she doesn't have to go looking for stuff that has like a little bit of everything in it. So. Let me get you a good view. So, it's going to be a little bit of beating here, so it might be a little loud. Let's see if I get zoomed back in. Oh. Let's zoom in a little bit. So you be able to see kind of what I'm doing. So let's pick one here. This one's kind of got some little flat edge on it. Let's see if I can just, I want to try and beat this thing sideways a little bit. I'm going to have to get a better hold in the sax head. It's not the best vice in the world to this. Oh, let's see here. Nope, it's not the best vice in the world for this. That is fairly hard. This metal wedge is here. This metal wedge in here is fairly hard. Let's see if I can move it with this. Not yet. It is moving though. Not very much. Hold a little bit better, but it's just it's is what it is right now. Hard hardwood jaws with out in the end like this. Not the best way to do this. Let's see if I can get it out of there now. Okay, um, let's see. What I want to do, I'll zoom you out a little bit. I want to measure this distance here and see if I have a piece of wood lying around so I can offset the thing on the vise. So I'm getting about something around an inch. See what I have lying around. Let's see what am I, what am I at here? Eight five. So I need something thicker than three quarters. What I'm trying to do is offset the uh, the uh, taper in the vise. So this is three quarters and a quarter. So that's inch right there. So we'll see if we can put this in the other side. Perfect. 
wrap this. This is going to offset the vice's ability to rack. That should hold it better. Let's see if we can get some beating on it now. It is moving. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Now, let's see if we can beat this handle out of it. on the ground and make a big smash. Let's see if we can get this thing sitting in here all. Hi. Hi, hon. You're already back? Thing? My shoe thing? Oh. See if we can get this axe handle out of here, honey. Okay. It's moving. has moved, but I have a feeling that what I'm doing is I'm driving this into it and I'm wedging it apart. What if, um, hold on one second. What if instead of that? Put the head in and see if you can get some chunks out. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to beat on a flyer spot. Get that punch out of there. Come on. Definitely wedging it apart.
That's pretty good. Rocking, so can we twist it? Yep, if I can get it held better. There, there we go. We go. Uh, let's try this again, see if we can hit on a flat spot here. Going good now. Going good now. Don't drive the punch into the wood. You just did it. Right Come on. Most. Got it, hon. Got it. Nice. All right, back to way out. So you can see, I marked the top, this is the top, and uh, it does, let's measure it and see if it's tapered, make sure you guys can see the bench here. inches the bottom is 1.8 so it, it's tapered like almost a quarter of an inch from bottom to top so what we want to check is we want to make sure that my shoulder my pencil go. I had a pencil here it was just here yeah, my bottom is at least 1.8. And it is. And then my top is going to be at least 2. Which it is. So we want really to make sure that we're at least inch each side of the center line. So 
So that's like a drop dead point. And this side, that's a drop dead point. So that's our two inches. And then we're gonna take and we're gonna taper this from here. Here, kind of like that, so that'll be our cutoff, and then just go slightly outside over here, give us a little bit of room, slightly outside right here, all right, so that gives us our cut here and our cut here and then we're going to do the width too just want to make sure that our width is 0.65 on this side 0.54 on the bottom tapers 5, uh, 50 thousandths from bottom to top I got Really almost 60 down here. I got 65 up here. So it tapers 50 thousandths top to bottom. And it's 60 on the top, right? Yeah. Total max width 65. So we want 30, 30 thousandths each way. Is drop dead just a little bit outside it get over here a little bit outside it and that'll be straight we want that to go straight down To the shoulder, which is going to be right here. All. And it's going to be fat right here. So we want this to taper out. Taper up here, kind of like that for the palm swell. I want to cut that all the way off though. I want this to be. If we could check the total width on this handle, which I don't think we can, because it's busted off, we'll just end up doing that by, we'll end up doing this side by eye. So we know that this line's got to come down and squirt out, and this line's going to come down and squirt out. We're going to cut this straight off. all the way and we will taper it down to something if I can let's see how thick oh this doesn't have a slide in it huh. Quarter inch, 
inch out to the side. So pretty much got a quarter there. So I think this can just be straight for now. Yeah, we got just a little more than a quarter from the wedge. I mean, from the um, tenon over on both sides, just a little teeny bit more than a quarter. And it's gonna shape down to that being the thickness at the edge. Okay, so well, let's get this thing cut. I want to get it cut off here straight and the other end straight, and then we can take it to the bandsaw. <coughs> See, what we got for a saw to cut it off. Japanese saws do not like hardwood. Um, I don't want a fine cut, I want cross cut cuts. Not fine. Let's try that one. Cross cut saw, it's not fine. So I'll get you a view over here. And you cut this end off. No, I might be better off. Get these punches out of the way. Try the vice to see if it's all enough.
wood. All right, so this is based on, you can see the wood we're using there, that solid wood outside the punky wood, a 30 inch ax handle. Should be a 30 inch handle. Perfect length. Um, and uh, we're gonna go to the bandsaw and cut it out. So, let's put you guys on pause or take you out in the shop. All right, so here's the setup. Uh, tripping over stuff in the shop here. Uh, I do have a pretty small band on there right now. I just took off my big band a little while ago to do some scroll cutting on some Christmas presents. So, that is going to affect things a little bit. Hopefully, it won't have any problem with this white oak. We're going to find out. Um, get some more lights on. It's going to get loud because I'm going to throw on my vacuum for some dust collection here. And we'll see if we can rip this down. I want to make my straight cut on this side first so that I have a reference focus. All right, so that went pretty well. Uh, cut it fairly smooth. I stayed just outside the line, pretty much all the way down. It's a fairly straight cut. There's one little bump right here. Not a big deal. Now we're gonna cut out this profile on this side. And uh, this should be a good enough reference surface to do that. So let's do that one. It's gonna get loud again.
you can see now, we have the basic handle. And the palm swell, right here, we got the tenon going through the axe head to shoulder for where it's going to seat against the axe head. Um, the axe head is going to seat on this taper right here. This has to be taken down to the size of the tenon. It's kind of that mark right there and there's one right here where my finger is. But we will trace on that shape, the bigger shape. Um, no, we need the smaller shape, the smaller of the two shapes and carve it out until it fits. And then beat the ax head on. We'll cut a slot through it for a wedge. And uh, we will shape this handle. And that's all going to be in part two. But um, I think what we'll end up doing for the sake of you guys at home, trying to figure out how to remove all this material. Now, like I said, you can do it with a draw knife or a grinder or whatever. I think what we'll do is we'll end up taking a router. Um, something probably three eighths to half inch and route this profile all down here, not this, but this profile all down here. And that's going to knock off the edge on most of this and get it to a kind of round ish shape. We don't want to go too much because if anything, we want it to be, um, we want this handle to be kind of this kind of shape. So it really depends on what this radius is here and here, how much we can take off these corners without having to do it all by hand. And then the rest of it would end up being um, all with with uh, a grinder, draw knives, spoke shaves, so on and so forth. But whatever that radius is right there, we can knock these corners off with a router really fast and get down to a basic shape. But uh, you can see the grain direction, slightly rift. That would be rift. It's not, this isn't quite rift sawn. This is more quarter sawn, but this would be slightly rift sawn to the profile. That's perfect. And uh, we're going to go from there. So that's step one. And now we have a basic axe handle. And now we're just going to make it round. Like I said, you go at this with an angle grinder and just basically grind the whole thing off until it feels right. We want to try to maintain center lines. I'll draw center lines down here and here and one down the back also to match this center line right here. You want to use those center lines to terminate your radius um, as a guide so that when you, when you get this to finish that it's straight like this versus just going at it and then it'd be all crooked and wavy and stuff like that. So uh, next step is going to be to put some center lines on it. Maybe we'll throw a router on here, route off some of these edges, and then we'll and we'll put the profile of the wedge up here. Probably fit the axe head um, after we knock off the edges and stuff. You can hold on to it good like this. So I think it's probably best to do the axe head portion of this before we do the rest of the axe. Because we can hold it in a vise good like this while we do this section. So we'll probably do that first. We'll do the axe head, get the axe head seated. Um, or the tenon made so it goes on some of the way before we go to shaping the rest of it all right so that's going to be part one and thanks for watching and we'll see you in part two